The development of new markets requires some hardware and some software. And it requires institutions that put in place that hardware and software. When we look at the development of biodiversity markets, we find some very well-known actors, banks in particular. And what's curious and scary at the same time is that oftentimes these are the very same banks that were also very actively involved in the trading um, that led to the last large financial crisis that we in Europe have just lived through, and that is the financial crisis of 2008-2009. After the market in derivatives, financial products that were at the heart of the crisis in 2008-2009 um, dried up, banks were looking for other places to invest the money that they had and produce and generate the kind of returns, profits that they had, been gotten, had gotten used to in, with trading derivatives in their financial markets as a possibility to invest in this biodiversity, i.e. in the land. So they have the future asset that will be producing the profits in this new market. The likelihood that banks, traders, uh, will be developing the hardware and software of this new market in a way that benefits them rather than benefits nature will be the same as was the case in the financial crisis 2008-2009. These financial derivatives, financial products that were being traded very rapidly, were not helping house owners to safely finance their home. No, they were developed and used to increase the profits that banks could make. The logic of the banks hasn't changed between then and now. So we can safely assume that the motivation of the financial sector that's involved in advancing the financialization of nature, the drawing in of biodiversity, making it available to financial markets, will happen under the same um, conditions. Not to get the best and most out of it for nature, but to get the most out of this new trade for the banks. This will not solve the biodiversity crisis. It will increase um, the risk for those who depend on the land, and it will increase the profits that those who already disproportionately gain from the current development model that requires constant development, constant growth, and now will also require supposed compensation of that growth to make it appear green. They will gain and not the communities. One abstraction further if we think about the financial crisis of 2008-2009 and the financial products that were used, it was not just credits or loans given to homeowners on very precarious uh, conditions. It was then the dividing up of this debt um, that could be sold on and then banks could speculate with the likelihood of that loan being repaid. It's not that big a stretch of an imagination to use the same logic of dividing up the biodiversity credits and dividing up biodiversity in a sense and saying, you can now speculate 
on the future date of extinction of that species. You can speculate with the habitat that is required for that species. Will it be maintained or will it be lost? Uh, the country of Honduras has begun to discuss a law that allows it to put on the financial market the part of its country that's not yet allocated in mining concessions. Um, and with these credits for potential future mines, um, the money that comes from selling those credits for potential future mines would allow Honduras to reduce its, its financial debt. But what happens to those who bought the credits for the potential future mine? They will first speculate with the likelihood of the concession being given in a particular area. And if there is resistance from the community against that area that today is still their land, that they use for farming, the government comes and says, well, too bad you have to stop farming here because we have sold this piece of land as a potential future mining concession. And now those who hold the potential concession, they want to see the mine to be developed because there is a lot of money that they have at stake. They speculated that this would become a mine. You want an environmental impact assessment? Ah, oh, sorry, can't do that because we already got the money for kind of promising that this would become a mine. Again, not happening yet quite today. And some people will say, well, but this is, this is all conspiracy. This is not going to happen. This will not. This is not the purpose of nature accounting. We don't want that. No, I, I believe those um, who uh, say, but the economy of ecosystems and biodiversity is not about that kind of development. But how will they prevent this kind of development once the methodologies are there to start speculating, um, to start uh, trading biodiversity? You provide the instruments, and the use of those instruments will be out of your hands. And that, I believe, means that what looks improbable today may well become very likely tomorrow. So how can those who say today that they are comfortable with developing the methodology for accounting for nature say that they can also control what happens with that technology later on? It's naive or disingenuous, depending on the motivation that drives people to say, I believe we can do accounting without risking the trading. If you do the accounting, you will get the trading.